Welcome, I'm Darren, and I will not be your professor today because today is a day that I'm going to learn something. So, this is going to be a little rough. This is the first time I've ever done any sort of an unboxing. And this isn't really a true unboxing because this is opening up a, a well, I guess it is a, a, a regular unboxing. But this is a vendor box, and or a vending machine box, I should say. And I've I've seen these before. I've never opened them up, so I don't know what it's like inside. But I I have I've always I always assumed it was just a bunch of cards. But I came to realize I think this is what where those cello packs come from. So I'm going to be finding out. But I'll go ahead and get started and just kind of talk through it. So these boxes are uh, it says it has 500 bo cards in it, and I love that slogan for the fun of it. And so it's not going to have a complete set in it, but it, I'm, I'm interested to see how close to a complete set it gets. And sometimes these boxes are kind of rifled through. I don't know if this one is, and I assume that, let's see here. It, no, it is actually all, uh, all random cards. And so vending machines for cards were something that happened that, that came to a close after uh, or before I started getting getting into it. So I never experienced a card vending machine. I'm really curious what they look like. And um, I also don't know if these are early in the print run or later in the print run, so I don't know where it aligns with error cards. But these cards are, um, or Brett, uh, these cards are from the 1987 uh, Tops year. This is this is always difficult for card collectors from um, from the football side to uh, to remember because the the tops cards all started off as football cards um, football card designs one year and then the next year the baseball cards would follow pretty much the exact same uh, mar um, exact same design in a different way oh Billy Bean and so these cards are modeled after the 1986 football cards which have a, a green uh, grass with hash marks design and then they did a wood version for for baseball and they do basically the same thing every single year so i have to remember as i'm going through these cards that these are 87 not 86 but baseball cards um are uh they're not my strength so in this set there are basically 15 cards to look for there are five uh rookies of note there's barry bonds bo jackson barry larkin rafael palmero and uh will clark and then there are five error cards of of no note uh, there's don mattingly um all-star that's somewhat of note and then there are five regular uh, player cards in this in this um, set that are worth remembering: um, Nolan Ryan, Kyle Ripken Jr., uh, Big Mac, Jose Canseco, and Roger Clemens. So these are obviously not uh, numeric because that would just be ridiculous. Um, yeah, I never, I never did get into, uh, I n never did get the experience of getting cards out of a vending machine. It's an interesting concept, and I, it, it would, it made more sense to me when I thought that these might have been due to, um, they, they might have been cello packs, because you got to wonder how much did the cards cost out of the vending machine, but they stopped it before 1990 90s when i when i began so for me vending machines were always for stickers uh panini stickers specifically in fact i still have a difficult time with the concept that panini is a major player in the world of, of cards that they kind of won in a way the baseball cards here are um are all uh, pretty fresh they they appear to be uh, perfectly oh, there's Barry Larkin um, they be, appear to be in perfect um, uh, mint conditions so these aren't there's there's not wear and tear 
one of the big advantages to these boxes is the fact that the the packs in uh, in the regular packs they all have gum in them well these don't have gum in them so there's no damage to any outer cards and there's no effect to any of the other cards inside so that's a that's a really big advantage and i've heard that some people would buy multiple boxes and then put together sets from that complete sets back in the day and that makes perfect sense since it's 500 cards it's going to be interesting to see uh how many doubles end up um appearing so all right we've already got conseco and we've got nolan ryan so we've it's pretty clear that this is not a box that has been rifled through. This is a fresh box with, with all of the potential stars in it. So this will, will get me about as close as I can get to a complete set. And that makes it, uh, it makes it a lot more fun when you know that you may... Okay, so here's Phil Necro. That's one of the error cards. Um, when you know that you got a clean shot at at all the cards. Oh, I've never seen the checklist in these cards. This that is a really nice checklist. I like that. So, I'm not going to bore you guys with actually going through the numbers and seeing how close I can get to a complete set. I'll jump ahead to that. But I do want to go through and at least see if all of the the key cards do come up at some point. Okay, so Wade Boggs, are, we've already had one of those. So we do have doubles coming up and that'll definitely limit my ability to get a complete set. I have to say, I like this baseball set. Topps didn't use to design cards well until probably the mid 90s. They finally started to get into it. And there are a couple of sets here and there that would pop up and would look pretty cool. Uh, there's another Jose Seiko, so we're uh, at least starting to double up on good cards. And um, the 86 base, uh, the 86 football set was, was it's an okay design. I like the 84 and definitely the 85 a lot better. But the 86 set is okay. I think that this set came out a lot better than that. But the 85 uh, the 86 baseball set and definitely the 85 um, baseball set are sets I've never I've never gotten into. I've never felt that they were um, that they were very good designs at all. So this I'm I'm pleasantly surprised every time I I look at these cards and just am able to appreciate the the rare ability of tops to pull something off. It is, it's, it's always fun to, to step into something new. And for me, the, the opportunity to go through one of these boxes is a, is a really fresh, a really refreshing uh, experience. The, um, the idea that the cards were sold, I guess that the vending machine, um, I guess the vending machine gave you multiple cards per time, but it is kind of weird to think that the cards would be sold in a vending machine when, when you think about the um, the value relationship. You know how much were they sold for? Because one cent per card seems pretty cheap. Five cents per card seems a little bit steep. And um, as we're closing in on the end, Billy Bean, yeah, it looks like this is like 250 cards that are just duplicated because I'm seeing a lot of the a lot of the same names keep popping up uh, throughout. So, so I'm expecting that I'm going to be needing a lot of of cards. That's the first Wade Boggs, so uh, maybe I'll be up over 300 unique cards. Yeah, so, all right, this, is, um, this has been uh, pretty cool. I'm gonna, 
I'm going to pause the video and then I'll, I'll come back after I've pulled this all together just to see how complete the set is and see what cards I've missed and to check out the Phil uh, Nicro cards and see if those are the errors or the corrects. Not that it, it matters, but it's just kind of nice to know whether it's, um, it's a late in the print run or early print run group of cards. So I will uh, cut out here and I'll be back in a bit. So while sorting through these cards, I figured that I'd do an audio overlay and talk a little bit about, about uh, three things that I noticed in this set. So the first one is there are 10, 10 cards of financial note, and I got three of them. I didn't get either of the two really high dollar rookies, Bo Jackson or, or uh, Barry Bonds, but I did get Nolan Ryan, I got Barry Larkin, and I got Jose Canseco. And I got two copies of each. So. It was, it was about on par for, for what I was noticing in terms of how much of the set I got. And I did get a lot of the not quite a dollar cards through. So, so I'm, I'm pleased uh, percentage wise with, with how things turned out. I also noticed that there, there appeared to be a marked difference between the quality of the wood grain on the card border. But because so many of these cards are doubled up, I was able to find that, no, actually those are deliberate patterns. So they have a number of different types of wood textures and wood grains. And when I say a number of them, I mean, we're probably talking 15 to 20 combinations of colors of wood and wood patterns. And they are, they are distinct on each card. So every single Nolan Ryan card has a certain pattern and a certain color. and Jose Canseco has a certain number, a certain color and a certain pattern to his wood grain. And this is, um, it's, it's not per team, it's, it's only per player. Normally I don't like it when they mix up colors all over throughout a set, but in this case, it's got a really cool quality to it. It's still not gonna look great, but it is fun to see that they, they put some meaning behind it. And there's an odd anomaly in the set in that the Oakland A's have two first basemen who are named Bruce Bocci and Dusty Baker. Now, Dusty is the same Dusty that would go on to coach the San Francisco Giants to almost a championship, not quite. But the uh, that Bruce Bocci is not the actual Bruce Bocci to follow him. That Bruce Bocci shows up at a completely different part of the set. He is a catcher for the San Diego Padres. And it's ironic that there are two Bruce Bocci's, period, let alone in the same set. And it can, it can kind of throw you off. I'm just going to pretend that it didn't throw me off, but that I knew all along what was going on. But it's a, it's a funny little quirk that pops up here that I, I really get a kick out of. So. Just a few little notes and uh, I'll get back to sorting and talk to you in a moment. All right, so I'm back. And basically, the, the set as it worked out turned out to be 282 cards as opposed to 250, which would have been half. So it was over half of the cards in the set. And the, uh, I got a couple of the, uh, the high dollar cards, not, not the complete collection of high dollar cards, which you would expect if, because I got about, about a third of the final set. So I would say that if you got three of these, you'd probably end up with three sets. The, uh, the odds of course are going to be so, so because this was two, uh, two copies of almost every single card. There were some unique cards, uh, that don't, that were only one per. So you're assuming that you're going to get about a third of, of the set per, per box. But it is a fun box to go through. I found only one error card, or I only found one card that has an error version, and it had a corrected version in this set. So that means that this is a late run um, card set. The the cards are all in in excellent shape. So these are cards that could potentially be graded. I don't. I haven't gone through and and analyzed. Uh, necessarily any of the cards specifically, but the corners seem pretty sharp. The box does a really good job 
you know, a lot of times with packs, corners can, can kind of bounce around and get impacted even by the pack itself. But in this case, the box has, has square corners at every single point. So it gives a better opportunity for the cards to hold up well. And the centering looks great. The, the purity of the cards is, is really exceptional due to the fact that there is no gum. I uh, had a, a card here with a blemish. There's another card that had a blemish, but that's basically just kind of the printing process as it is. So this was a lot of fun, but this is more the kind of thing that you're going to do either for mining for, for specific cards to uh, sell or grade or to try to build sets. And again, it's going to take a couple of these boxes to build sets. In this case, it was a $15 box and the set is not worth the $45 it would, it would cost to potentially put together three sets. Even though per set it would work out all right, it's just, it's going to be a lot of investment for, for the chance. I would say I'd probably have to buy four boxes to feel comfortable with getting them. But otherwise, this, this was a neat little, little adventure for me, a great little thing to learn. And I definitely want to want to explore some of these, these really weird boxes that don't fit in the way that, that we're used to, say, 90s cards working. So thank you for joining me on this, and I uh, hope you enjoy the video, and hope you'll hit the like button and subscribe, and check out other videos. I don't really do box breaks like this, so most of the videos are going to be very different. So definitely check them out. Thank you.